everybody, welcome to Gunpla TV, episode 4, sponsored by Hobby Link Japan. Previously, we assembled and cleaned up and built our little double Zeta Gundam. And today, we're going to put the final details on it and make it mine. I mean, you can make it yours, but I'm going to make it mine. First off, what we're going to do is we're going to panel line this guy. As you can see, he's got lots of blank spaces in the armor. We're going to add some detail and pull out some of the depth and make it look a little bit more menacing. Alright, so to put the details on this thing, I'm going to need some supplies. I'm just going to head on to the warehouse and get what I need. As you can see, we're back in the marker section of the warehouse. Now, if you want to detail up your gun to model without using paint, this is probably your best option. And there's lots to choose from, as you can see. A variety of colors for any type of model or Gundam kit you want to do. But today we're going to be talking about panel lining. And when I do panel lining, I only really use one marker the Copic marker. And we're also going to add detail through things like weather and damage. And for those, this is really all you need. The, the weathering set from Gundam markers. This is the Gundam panel line marker that I took before. I was using it to clean up the gate damage on the, on the frame. This is the same marker, but in a dark black color. This is good for doing the panel lines on the, on the blue and the red. But this is my preferred marker of choice. It's the Copic marker and it's 0 0.02 millimeters in diameter. It's the smallest one I can find and it's great for these kits these size because you can get into all these cracks, all these recesses. Alright, I've got my model partially disassembled and I'm ready to start the panel lining. Now what are panel lines? For people who don't know, a panel line represents the section where one piece of armor meets the, another piece of armor and that seam in the middle, that's the line that we're going to draw. The reason people tend to do panel lines is to add depth to the model, a more of a 3D type view. But also, if your model has seen some action, it's a little bit dirty, the panel line looks like some dirt and debris has got into the crack. Alright, so I got my marker, and I'm just going to start anything that's recessed. I'm just going to draw a little... Uh, I'm just going to draw a little line here. Now when you're using panel markers to do your panel lines, there's a good chance you're going to make a mistake. But don't worry about it, you haven't ruined your model, there are easy ways to clean it up. The first way is just to use an eraser. But you can also use a toothpick or even a Q-tip. I'll show you how. So here I go, I'm going to make a nice panel line here on this, this side section here. Oh no! I made a mistake. Don't worry, I have an eraser. Just take that off. It's cleaned up and continue on. Let's do this one. Oh no, there's another mistake. Let's use a toothpick this time. Let's clean that up. Easy. Some wet tissue. And it's like it was never there. Remember, it's water-based. But probably the one I use quite often, oh no, is the Q-tip. With the Q-tip, you can go over the entire thing. The black should stay in the recess, and it looks a little grungy, like dirt. You can put a lot of ink on here, and then use this. You get this grungy effect. Like that. Now the heads on these Gundam, they tend to be very small with lots of lines in here that are very difficult to reach. So the easiest way to panel line it, I find, is to disassemble it and then panel line it before putting it back together. So I'm going to try to hold it steady with my hands here. It's very small. And I'm going to get in here and just color these tiny sections. Not bad. Some people like to do their panel lines very quickly. 
I tend to take my time. But I'm never satisfied. Now before I reassemble the head, there's one thing I want to take care of. The V-fin. Many times you'll notice along this line there's a little, it widens a little at the end. I don't really like that, so I'm going to make that part go away. If I can. Get my hobby knife. Cut along this line. Turn it down. You can also use your side cutters if you're more comfortable with that. So I've, I've trimmed off this little bump here. I made it smooth, but it's not as smooth as I would like it to be. So that's where the sandpaper comes in. All right, so you've seen how to do the panel lining and you've seen how to fix uh, the head, the V-fin. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna make this Gundam my own. I'm gonna do what I want with it. And this Gundam, is, it's this big lumbering looking thing. So I'm gonna make it look like it's seen some action, like, like a tank would. It's gonna be dirty, it's gonna be dusty, maybe it's gonna look a little old. I'm gonna try and get that effect. And I'm gonna be using the Gundam Marker Weathering Set. This gives you a variety of weathering effect markers in one set. We have things like mud or soot or rust and I'm going to use a combination of these to try and get the desired effect. Alright first things first I'm going to start from the ground up and the ground up is the feet. The feet are touching the ground, it's muddy, it's dirty, it's walking around a lot so I'm going to take the mud brown marker and what I tend to do is I tend to use quite a bit of it and I'll just smear it on here as best I can as much as I can. It's a lot. Don't think I'm going overboard because this is what the Q, where the q-tip comes in. Just wipe it around It'll catch on some edges. If the more you remove, the more the edges will show up. So don't worry about trying to take off as much as you can. Uh, it's looking pretty muddy. Oh, where has this guy been? As you can see, it's looking pretty dirty, but I'm not satisfied yet. I'm going to put some more mud on here. I can put on as much as I want because I can also remove as much as I want. Another good use for the Gundam marker is to add color to a part of the mech that doesn't have a color or you might want to change. So in this case, I've taken my red Gundam marker and I've done the inside of the thruster a nice red and it comes up very deep. You want to color it once, let it dry and go back in and color again to get a good effect. But you can clearly see it's different now. This will stand out when the model is assembled. Moving on to the legs. As I said, this mech, he's seen some action. He's a pretty dirty boy. Maybe he's got some chinks in his armor. Maybe he's missing some pieces. What I'm going to do with my hobby knife is I'm just going to Put it on here like this. Kind of rough up these edges. Maybe it's banged into a few things in its lifetime. And when I take my marker, go along all the edges here. You'll feel it's rough now. It's not so smooth. We'll start to strip this away. And you can see all the marks that I just put in there. Like this. From next time, we're going to take our gunfly modeling a step up. We're going to look at the Master Grade series of kits, something like this guy. These involves building a frame, putting the armor on top of it. I'm going to teach you what you need to know when it comes to terminology, as well as things like water slides, preparation for painting. Let us know what Master Grade model kit you would like to see built. See you next time.